Hey there CNCers! VCarve version 12 has recently been released and I want to tell you my top 10 favorite things I like about it so far. When I found out version 12 of VCarve was coming out I got pretty excited. Uh, I had hoped for a couple of changes and they came through big time. I am not going to waste any time. I'm diving right in. Here is number one, the coolest thing that I like about VCarve V12 so far is that they have modernized the interface. It looks cleaner. They've removed some icons that weren't really doing much. You know, they used to have undo and paste and copy up there. You didn't need that. You, you should know the keyboard shortcuts. Um, they have cleaned up some of the icons, which for me, maybe nobody else notices, but like, you know, the offset one, I just find easier to understand now. So they took a bunch of the icons and redesigned them. And so they're a little easier to understand for me. Um, and they just kind of gave it an overall cleaner, more modern look. And it's got a lovely vibe about it now. For number two, if you haven't heard about this already, they're called keep out zones. I think this is brilliant because as a person who loves to use clamps on my work pieces to hold them in place um, or screws, uh, I don't want to have to worry about running into them with my bits while I'm doing my path. And typically speaking, you would have to position your clamps or your work holding around your tool path. Keep out zones allows you to do the opposite. You get to tell the software, hey, there's something here that I don't want you to hit, so don't hit it. I'll show you really quick. We're just going to import an image. Uh, we'll use this dragonfly. I like the looks of this guy. So let's say we were going to throw a screw in. Let's represent screws with a couple little circles. Oh, those aren't little. Those are, let's go like, there we go. That's a screw. I know it's tiny, but okay, maybe too small. There we go. There's a screw and there's a screw. Those two screws are what's holding down our workpiece. Well, we don't want to run into them. I know we're not going to hypothetically, but here we are. We don't want the tool path to go near it. So you come over here to this wonderful keep out zones and you can create keep out zones from the selected vector. So I'm going to grab both of these because those are screws. And I'm going to say, I want a clearance of one inch around these screws. So don't even go near them. You can create from selection, boom, keep out zones. My bit and my tool path will calculate around that to stay away from those when it's moving. So you don't have to worry about hitting them while it's carving or while it's moving and jogging. It's fantastic. And to get rid of them, it's simple as clear zones. Keep out zones, absolutely brilliant addition. Number three that I love, and some of these things that they've updated are just conveniences. They're not like groundbreaking new something, but they just made it more convenient within the software. The sheets and layers and components being accessible at that top menu, again, they were always accessible over here on the side panel. There was no issue, but it's just more convenient having them right here in this top bar. They're all grouped there right nice together. You can do whatever you need to do with them, just like you usually do, add layers, rename, you know, turn things on and off, but they're just more convenient. So uh, I don't know if, if somebody suggested it or if somebody within VCar or uh, with Vector was like, hey, let's make life easier for these users, but they knocked it out of the park. Something simple, but something effective. All of those little toggles up there, love them. Number three. Number four, keeping in line with those conveniences is these little guys up here, these toggle components and all of these guys up here. They're super nice. I'm gonna bring in a 3D model just so we can show all of the wonderfulness. It's gonna take me one second. We're going to make this, what, about an inch big. We'll hit apply. We'll position an import. We're going to say this and we're going to say cool. Okie dokie. So I've imported my egg and you can see, look, my image is in the way. Oh, I want to select the egg, but it's being a real pain in my butt. Well, guess what? You come up here and you toggle the bitmap image off. Boom. You have easy selection of things. It's, it really is, again, just another convenience. So in the exact reverse order, I want to select my image, but say my model's in the way. Well, guess what? 3D component gone. See, it's been nice, you know, knowing you. I love this thing. I have used it extensively already. It's just super convenient way of improving your workflow. Toggling up there, try it, use it. Number five, halfway there, guys, is the, where'd he go? I need to be in my 3D view. This guy here, this re kind of imagined viewport cube. I have an extensive 3D background in a previous life and I actually never really used them because they drove me bonkers. I just used the keyboard shortcuts and you know, jogged around. Oh, I twiddled around. That's the word they use on the website, which I absolutely love. That's a wonderful UK term. Um, but they've done a really great job of reimagining this. And my favorite part about it is if you click on say a front view, right? That's fantastic. But if you double click on one of those views, it will, 180 you to the exact opposite view, which I think is just brilliant. It's just a super nice shortcut to have, you know, here I'm on the top and I want to go to the bottom. There I go. Just double click. Oh, I'm at the bottom. I want to go to the top. Double click. Good to go. Again, not new, but just reimagined to make life more convenient and more easy for a user. I think they did a bang up job on that view cube. Again, I don't usually use it, but I use this thing regularly. Try it out. Number six. Here we go. As a fairly experienced user, I don't often look for tool tips, but if you are a newbie in VCarve and you got V12, you are lucky because they've added this little 
helper menu guy down here. And if there's basically anything you hover over, it'll give you a little tip down there. I can't do both at the same time, but it's super helpful. If you're a newbie user and you're not sure what something does, even any of the icons over here, you create a vector and it can tell you what to do. And it gives you some tool tips while you're at it. So that little helper guy down there, even though I'm fairly experienced, I have actually learned a whole bunch from looking at that guy because I was like, oh, I didn't know that that was an option or I didn't know it did that. Check that guy out. Don't just disable it, it's lovely. Number seven, the V-Carve Inlay Toolpath. Is this, um, were you not like, were you not able to do inlays before this? Absolutely not. But does this little toolpath make it easier? Yes. With a toolpath that can have a certain amount of trickiness to it anyways, the people at Vectric just made life easier for us users. So that's what I like about this one. So it's called the V-Carve Inlay Toolpath. And if you, let's, I'm gonna just whip this together. Let's draw a star up here, right? So that's kind of cool. We made a nice little star, there we go. We go over here to the inlay toolpath and we can tell it the pocket depth, the glue gap, because when you are doing inlays, you wanna leave a little bit of squishy, you know, cushion in there for the glue to squish around. And then your surface gaps, you can choose what bit, you can mess with all the other things, but the long and the short is it's going to create the pocket that you need to cut out and the negative, the plug that will go in there. So I'm gonna hit calculate. Here we go. So I'm gonna reset my preview and you can see that it has created Boop, an inlay. So that's the pocket that it's going to create. Boop, right? Do, do, do. We've created the star of the pocket. Now, you're obviously gonna have to tinker with this a little bit more than this, but it will also create the plug that you need. And you can see when I select this tool path that it's going to car carve out a star that's in the negative of that plug. So there you go. It created the plug and then, or sorry, it created the pocket and then it created the plug. Boop, there's your inlay, V-Carve inlay tool paths. Again, just a super nice convenience for end users. Well done. Number eight, the ability to draw 2D vectors in the 3D view, view. <laughs> so typically speaking, previous versions, you would do whatever you're doing, you know, freehand drawing, and you draw that in your 2D view, and then you'd assign a tool path, and you know, you'd preview it. Well, the wonderful people at Vectric said, hey, why don't we just let them draw in the 3D view? Because sometimes people want to do that, and we're going to let them do that. So, doop, drew in the 3D view, 2D vector. Now I can still do my tool path. I can still preview it and do all my things, but it's just right there at my hands. I don't have to switch back and forth. It's a wonderful workflow addition. I love it. Number nine, we're getting near the end of my list. This one, as somebody again, who has a 3D background is very handy. If you don't know what orthographic view is, it may or may not be life-changing for you, but it could come in very handy in certain scenarios. So right here, this little guy, orthographic view. So you can see, this is what my perspective looks like, right? There's perspective to it. Okay, well, why is orthographic view such a cool thing? Well, if we go to a front view, you can still see there is perspective to it. So you can't really actually get a, a, a profile of what's happening. Well, if you toggle on orthographic, it gets rid of the perspective out of your viewport and allows you to just see like a cross section almost of what's happening. It can come in really handy for seeing depths of things and not having to worry about the skew and the perspective. Just a really handy addition. Try it out if you haven't used it before. It is wonderful. Orthographic view. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking along. I appreciate you coming and checking out and listening to what I have to say. Um, I think V-Carve is fantastic. I've made that pretty clear. Um, and this newest update just makes me love it that much more. So if you're sticking around, number 10, my most favorite thing so far about V-Carve version V12 is the sketch carving toolpath. This thing is super cool. It just allows you to take basically an image and create a sketch from it. So you don't need to vectorize it. You don't need to worry about tracing it and then assigning a toolpath to it. It just makes life really cool and really easy and you're able to turn out amazing looking things. So here's an example that Dragonfly I've had open the whole time. We come over here to the sketch carve toolpath. You can go, again, go by the bitmap or a 3D model. You can mess with the depths just like a normal toolpath and all the things. You can change your machine limit boundary you can trace, or uh, sorry, mess with the trace parameters and line thickness and stuff like that. I just want to show you what it does because I was so excited when this came out that I just played with it instantly. So here we go. When we hit calculate, you will see that it does a little calculation. And you're like, oh, really cool. But watch what happens when we preview. Ba-bam. Two seconds, really cool looking dragonfly from a very ornate image. And it just kind of went, whatever, boom, I'm going to smoke this and make this amazing looking carving. So... I think this is fantastic. It's such a cool option and there's so many things to play with within there and so many ideas that start flowing for me. So I love it. Sketch Carve Toolpaths. As an added bonus, if you don't have Aspire, which a lot of us don't and that's cool, they have basically the same 
um, idea only, they take it to a whole different crazy level. I call it like sketch carving on steroids. <laughs> um, so you can come up here and aspire and you can create a component, so like a 3D model from an image. Boom. And then if we just put a 3D finishing toolpath on it, it's a eighth inch ball nose. Eh, it's not my favorite bit for this, but just for giggles, again, same as normal toolpaths, you can mess with all the settings. I just want to show you what it will do with taking an image, preview selected, and from your image, it creates this 3D model and it allows you to carve a 3D model from an image. I think it's genius. Again, the, the, the ideas that start flowing for me are just so cool. They can relate to so many projects on CNC. Um, and it turns out a really cool looking image. This was, again, two seconds worth of work. I didn't tinker with anything. I didn't mess with settings. I just imported it and it's now got this amazing looking model that it's carving out. And look at this. I think this is super fancy. I think this is brilliant. V-Carve, well done. You get a you know, hand of applause from me. Uh, that's it. V-Carve V12, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It is fantastic. Um, lots of cool new features in there. There, are, I'm sure there are more, and I know that other people have done videos about this, so if you're watching mine, I appreciate that. I appreciate you sticking around. We love the support you're giving us. And until something else cool comes up, we'll see you around the CNC.